All right, court is calling 2023 CR 3133B, State of Texas versus Nicholas Ray Ramos. Can I have the parties approach and announce for the record for the state? Daniels for the state. Anthony Cantrell for the defendant. And judge, uh, just before this, I know that we have uh, witnesses that we were gonna call. If I could just have a moment just to speak with them. Oh, well, just before we do that, just one moment. In the PSI report, have you all read the PSI report? I haven't got had a chance to do oh, that. He's saying he didn't do this. Well, I mean, that's what he says in the PSI report. In the PSI report, he's just so everybody can know. In the PSI report, he says he caught an Uber to his friend's house, the victim, and the victim knew he was struggling, didn't have any money and clothing. And so the victim gave him money and clothing and paid for an Uber for them to leave. And then lo and behold, he wakes up and he has charges for aggravated robbery. He doesn't know why, because he didn't rob anybody. So y'all may want to discuss whether or not this should be a jury trial. So uh, no judge, we don't want this to be uh, a jury trial. All right, so I'll let you all, he says he needs to read the, the PSI report and then we'll find out if your client wants a jury trial. Are you Nicholas Ray Ramos? Yes, Your Honor. All right. The defendant entered a plea on October 23rd of guilty to the offense of aggravated robbery. According to the plea bargain agreement, there are no applications and punishment is to be assessed at a cap of 16 years in the prison. And there are several cases that are being taken into consideration. Have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report? We have, yes, Your Honor. We have, Your Honor. Any objections to the PSI report, State? No, Your Honor. Defense, any objections to the PSI report? No, Your Honor. All right, Defense, I note in the PSI report um, things that your client has said, which is that he has no idea where these charges came from. And specifically, what he says in the PSI report. And the reason why I want this on the record is because I want to make sure that your client actually wishes to continue with this plea. What he said, as to the instant offense, the defendant stated he was at his home on this date when the victim reached out to him and wanted to hang out. He stated that he agreed to go over to his home. He stated that he got an Uber to the victim's home and a friend ended up going with him. He stated while, that while at the victim's home, he offered him some clothes and money. He stated that the victim knew he was struggling and offered to help him. He stated that the victim even allowed him to wear his jewelry. He stated that he left the location and went to a nearby park. He stated that he did not end up going back home. He stated that the victim sent his friend some money so that they could Uber back home. He stated that later that day, the victim contacted him and told him that he needed his items back. He stated that he ignored the victim. He stated that he later found out that he had a warrant for, for this case when he attempted to make a payment to his bondsman for another case he has pending. He stated that he called the victim and confronted him about the allegations. He stated that he was later arrested for the instant offense. The defendant denies the allegations of him using or having a gun, but did admit to keeping the victim's clothes and others items. And uh, that is correct. It is in the PSI report. And I'll ask the court to also focus on page five. 
of the of the victim uh, impact statement. So, um, Judge, there was multiple felony cases that were um, plea bargained in this case that the state uh, took into consideration and dismissed, and that's why we went forward with this case. Um, so, my client has has stated that he does want to go forward with this case. Um, there were many concessions made by the state of Texas on this particular uh, defendant. So that's why we want to go forward. All right, Mr. Ramos, could you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Yes, ma'am. You can lower your hand, state your name for the record. And Nicholas Ray Ramos. All right, Mr. Ramos, do you wish to go forward with this plea? Yes, ma'am. All right. You do not want a jury trial? No, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Judge. All right. Uh, are there any witnesses from either side? No, Your Honor. We were informed that the witnesses made PSI uh, statements that were contained in the PSI. All right. Then any witnesses defense? No, Your Honor. All right. Then the court will hear argument. State? Judge, there are numerous cases that have been taken into consideration in order to reach this case uh, or in order to reach this plea agreement. I know that the defendant is young, pretty early in his life. But in that short amount of time that he's been an adult, he has racked up numerous arrests in various cases. Again, we're taken into consideration. Um, I think that it's the nature of those other charges and the fact that even while on probation or deferred on those charges, he still was picking up other cases. My understanding is that he was on probation when this all happened. So we would ask that you hit the cap, Judge, of 16 years. All right, defense. Your Honor, um, obviously my client is very young um, and he'll admit that he has made some serious mistakes. Um, he has a young daughter now uh, that he has not even uh, had a chance to see at this point. Um, one of the things I want the court to consider and when uh, the court uh, pronounced a sentence in this case, the co-defendant in this case was sentenced to eight years TDC. And we think that's appropriate. Uh, uh, given the circumstances. Um, yes, my client was involved in, and I, sh I shouldn't say was involved, but has been charged with other cases. The district attorney's uh, office made a uh, commitment to dismiss those cases, and they have done so. Um, judge, uh, with respect to th this particular case, um, the uh, defendant's I'm sorry, the, the complainant's father has stated that uh, the victim in this case was not hurt, uh, but he did not get his property back. So in light of that, his age, we'd ask the court to consider uh, an eight-year sentence, which is um, what the court saw fit when uh, the court pronounced sentence on, on the co-defendant in this case. And judge, if I may, hey. The co-defendant was sentenced in the 187. There is a stark difference between that co-defendant and this defendant. That co-defendant did not have nearly as many cases that were being taken into consideration. So that was something that drastically changed what was happening in that situation versus this situation. All right. And just so everyone knows, and I, I know both attorneys know, I look at cases individually. Um, <clears throat> so, Mr. Ramos, is there anything you want to say? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I've been incarcerated eight months. And I know I did what's wrong. No, whatever I did, I know that I know it called me to come in this courtroom today. I'm I sorry, I, I'm having a hard I'm time hearing you. Uh, uh, I know whatever I did called me to come in this courtroom today, and I know it caused a lot of harm to different people's families and stuff. Uh, I had more than enough time to think about what I've done. I just try to get back home to my little girl. All right. So, how old is your child? Two months and a week and a half. So, why didn't you think about this beforehand? Comment on it. I'm sorry. I have a comment on it, Your Why? Why are you out committing crime? I don't understand. And I'm asking you these questions because I'm trying to center figure out what will be the appropriate sentence for you. Uh, the state and the defense will tell you. State and defense, they come up with their agreements. This is their agreement, that I can sentence you up to 16 years in prison. 
So I'm asking you these questions so I can make a decision on what to sentence you to. And that's a lot of time because the range of punishment for this offense is because they've capped it at 16 is five to 16 years. So that's what I can sentence you to. So I'm trying to figure out what is your thought process and why you are out here committing crimes and violent crimes. I mean, I mean, did you wake up one day? I always think of people who appear before me when they were in elementary school. Did they wake up one day and decide, hey, I want to be a criminal? All right. So I'm trying to figure out where did you go in your life that you decide, hey, I want to be a criminal. And I'm looking at your criminal history. Your criminal history is outrageous for a person your age. And I don't know if the misdemeanor, when you were placed on deferred adjudication, in that case, I don't know if something could have put you on the right, right path from there. We have the burglary of vehicles, not vehicle. There's a lot going on. And then there's an assault bodily injury case that's pending in, in County Court 15. So I'm trying to figure out what is your issue? I just, I guess I had a bad crowd around me. I ain't really had nothing for a little while. I have a, I have no structure. Oh, don't come to me with the structure thing because there are a lot of people who don't have structure. And when you mentioned the bad crowd, I guarantee you the person who got eight years, when they said they were running around with the bad crowd, they were talking about you. Yeah. So, since you brought up structure, what do you mean you don't have structure? I had nowhere to go. I had no uh, financial support. Uh, How about getting a job? I had nothing to get a job. I was old enough to get a job, and I had more than another chance to get a job, but I had no ID. I have no uh, social security, none of that. I didn't lost all that. So why didn't you have an ID? Uh, I, I, I lost it while uh, I moved out the house a little while ago. So why are you ago. moving out the house? Don't want to follow people's rules? Yes, no. So your lack of structure is because of you. It appears that somebody was trying to give you structure. And then in the PSI report, it says that you were going back home. So what home was this you were going to? I was really staying with my friends and my girl at the time. Where? With who? Who's all in the house? Her parents? Oh, yeah, me, my girl, her mom. Her little sister, her older sister, and her brother. All right. I still don't understand why parents allow children to live in their home and play house. Uh, just one moment. Sorry. All right, so you can continue. Oh. I don't understand why they would either, but I guess it was, I don't know, I guess it was because I was with the daughter and we were having a baby. Okay, I'm sorry. You need to put the mask down. Oh. Um, I don't know why they would let me stay at the house either, but I don't know, I, mean, I, don't know. I was with her for a little while. And I guess I had a good relationship with her family. But you still haven't explained to me why you're going out committing a bunch of crimes because you were placed on deferred adjudication. And I will tell you now, whenever you're placed on deferred adjudication now, it's different from when, when I first started practicing. Back then it was, you're on your own. But usually they will say, oh, you don't have an ID? Let us help you get your identification. Oh, you don't have this? Let us help you get this. So your response to not having your identification or having anything was to throw up your hands and start committing crimes. So I'm trying to figure out what to do with you. Do you deserve 16 years? No, ma'am. Oh, why not? And the question I'm asking you, your attorney will tell you, I ask a lot of people these questions. 
And so I want to see where your head is at. What do you think you deserve for committing an aggravated robbery, stealing from somebody who was trying to help you by giving you clothes, by giving you food, and according to you, paying for your Uber to and from their house? Years. Oh, okay, you're saying eight years? Did you? Because I'm not even going to interfere with attorney client. So why do you think you you deserve eight years for pulling a weapon on somebody and taking their items? Let's let me put you into this situation so you can understand better. Do you love your girlfriend? Yes, ma'am. Do you love your daughter? Yes, ma'am. Let's say your girlfriend and daughter are at their home minding their business, and one of her girlfriends comes over because she has a baby. And she needs mm, milk and all of the, you know, maybe some clothes for her baby. And your girlfriend say, oh, my daughter is now two months old. I have some one month old clothes. Here you go. Here's some clothing. Here's some money for you. And then that friend's like, oh, thank you. And then that friend pulls a gun on your girlfriend with your baby there and takes her items. What do you think that person should deserve? And that's an aggravated robbery that she would have just committed. And the range of punishment for that is five to 99 years or life in prison. What do you think that person deserves? Not talking about you, talking about the fact scenario where your girlfriend's best friend comes over, pulls a gun on her and takes items. What do you think she deserves? The sentence, um... I'm sorry, what? More than eight years. More than eight years? Well, why? Because you know what? Maybe she doesn't have her ID. Maybe she's not able to get a job. Why should why shouldn't she just get eight years? And you know what? Maybe she's running around with the wrong crowd. Why why shouldn't she get eight years? Because she's she's with a bad crowd. She doesn't have her ID. She doesn't have a place to stay. She has a baby to take care of. So why shouldn't she get eight years for pulling a gun on somebody and taking their items after they tried to help her? Because she's just running around with a bad crowd. She just doesn't have her ID and she just needs items for her baby. So why shouldn't she be allowed to just pull a gun on your girlfriend, take items that she wants, and then come before court and say, please just give me eight years or please just give me deferred adjudication because I'm running around with a bad crowd. I don't have my ID. I don't have my social security card and I need money and I don't have a job. You don't want that person to have eight years because they pulled a gun on somebody you care about, right? Yes, ma'am. That's what you've done in this case. You pulled a gun on somebody who was trying to help you out and they have family members that care about them. So do you still think you deserve eight years? I mean, you may want it, but do you deserve it? No, ma'am. All right, so what do you think you deserve? You got may I on, on his behalf? No, just just one second. I want to know what do you think you deserve? Honestly, look into your heart. What do you think you deserve for what you did to a friend who was helping you out? Ten, twelve. I'm sorry. A ten or twelve. Why not the full sixteen? Because it's just too much time. Is it because it's just too much time for you and you can't imagine doing 16 years? All right, any questions? I don't have questions, Your Honor. I, uh, I would just ask the court to, to consider uh, uh, somewhere in the eight to 10 year range um, Judge, my client uh, did not have family structure growing up. I think that's what he was trying to tell you. Um, he couldn't even remember his mother's last name. Um, his father uh, 
didn't give him much support. He was out on the streets by the time he was 17. Uh, he's 19 now. Uh, so um, when he committed this offense, he was he was basically homeless. He didn't have any uh, place to go. And, and I would suggest that's probably why he committed these offenses. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I mean, it's definitely wrong. Okay? But uh, um, he is very young. He's not the smartest kid in the world. And uh, he, he, I think he dropped out of school in seventh grade. All right. Why are you dropping out of school? When did you drop out of school? Seventh. <clears throat> why? Mask down so I can hear. Uh, I don't know. I had gone to a fight in seventh grade, and I just never went back to school because they were trying. I was going to alternative, and like going back to alternative. All right, they sent you to alternative school because there were issues at what we would call regular school. So that's people just don't go to alternative school because, hey, let's send them to alternative school. Usually there's some incident that has happened at regular school and you get sent to alternative school, be it for behavior or something else. And it was a fight. So it was a fight. So you got sent to alternative school. And when you're sent to alternative school, it's not forever. It's not. So you decided not to go back to school. Why not? Do you know, in Africa, I watch a lot of TV and watch a lot of documentaries. There are students in Africa who walk to school. They don't have any shoes. They don't have any desk. They sit on the floor with one sheet of paper. They don't have uniforms because they need to pay for their uniforms to go to school. And they sit on the floor because they don't have any desks for them. There's actually an organization called Kids in Need of Desks. And what ends up happening is people give money to that organization. So they actually make desks for the children. And now they've started making shoes for the children. And if you see the smiles on their faces just for the little things, and then here in America, you can go to school for free. And you drop out at seventh grade and commit a bunch of crimes. And now you're bringing a two month old into the world and you have no way to support that two month old other than being a criminal and stealing items, that's a problem. You understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, anything else from the state? No, Your Honor. All right, this is what the court is going to do. Court is finding you guilty. Court has already previously taken in consideration the cases that were listed in the uh, agreement. This is gonna run concurrent with County Court cause number 6915486915496942506914250. Mr. Ramos, I've read the PSI with a fine tooth comb, read the offense with a fine tooth comb, uh, took into consideration the things that the complainant said in the PSI. And I'm taking in consideration your age. I hope that you can get your life together. Uh, there is a $500 restitution to Beatrice Gonzalez, which was the deductible. Is there going to be any objection to the court ordering that? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. All right. There's to be restitution to Beatrice, B-E-A-T-R-I-S. Excuse me. If you all could not talk on the back row behind the court reporter, if you need to speak, just move to the other end. Gonzalez, G-O-N-Z-A-L-E-Z. -E and the amount of $500 and I'm just checking to make sure there's rest, no restitution to anyone else. Is that the only restitution state in the defense? Money wise, your honor, there was some property that was taken from the uh, victim in this case that was never given back clothing and things of that sort of budget. All right, they didn't list an amount for restitution for that. They didn't judge. All right. All right. Court is going to sentence you to 12 years in the prison. Give you credit for any time served. I'll ask for the therapeutic community. Is there anything else with regards to sentencing? No, you're right. 
All right. And I want to let you know the reason why I'm giving you the 12 years instead of the full 16 is because one, I don't want you to 100% become institutionalized because when people go to prison, it's a crapshoot whether or not they're going to be rehabilitated. And when you go to prison at your age, there are going to be a lot of influences at the prison that are not going to be good for you. And I would love it if people would go to prison and they could just do their time and not be bothered by anyone else. But you may end up being bothered by other people. You're going to have to keep your nose down. Do not become institutionalized. And while you're there, you're going to have to start thinking more about what got you there. And what got you there is not the fact that you don't have your ID or you're running around with a bad crowd because you're part of the bad crowd. Do you understand? Do you understand? Showing you what's in Ida trial for the certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Sign. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question about what a weapon or ammunition is, you need to speak to an attorney. And I don't know if I said it previously, but there's an affirmative finding of deadly weapon. And I'm going to do no contact, no in-person contact with minors. All right. Thank you very Anything much. Anything else? No, you're on. All right. Thank you. Let's get the facts straight. She loves a verbal ashtray. Never blowing smoke when she gets pissed. She's quick to castrate. Love her on a good day. Love her on a bad day. Either way, she's here to stay, stay, stay. Call her holy, 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 holy.